Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's our third installment of the New York State Hockey Hall of Fame in Normal Induction Weekend Interview Series. I'm Matthew Butner, joined now by Lou Viro, who was part of the 1980 Marathon Ice Team. Lou, does it surprise you that the 1980 team is still held in such high regard some 40 years after the fact? No. Uh it, it doesn't at all. As far as I'm concerned, it's the greatest single event ever in the history of USA hockey. Of course, we won in 1960 also. That team deserves an awful lot of credit, but uh, the 80 team uh, never lost the game. So, we did the 60 team. Right, but along with the whole thing, you just said it's uh, the singular most amazing event. And, I mean, there were a lot of games in that tournament, in that 1980 Olympics. Obviously, everyone knows and remembers the game against Russia, but that wasn't even the gold medal game, so which means more to you? I didn't ask. Well, we had to beat Finland in the final game, and uh, they had a goalie who's a good friend of mine to this day. So he's coaching named Yorma Volkton in Finland. He's in the International Ice Hockey and the Finnish Ice Hockey Hall of Fame. And he wasn't easy. I think we beat him 42 and he was behind him. And Herb made that famous speech, don't lose this game, you'll take it to your grave. And Herb said, you and uh, it motivated the guys and Mark Johnson and the boys got busy and pulled it out. Speaking of Herb Brooks, in the movie Miracle, which obviously it's a movie, Movie, so there are some liberties taken. There's a scene where he has the entire team run gassers for what seems like an hour. How true of a portrayal is that? That's and true. If, and I wasn't there. It happened in Norway. I think we got tired of beating in an exhibition game. Mark could tell you. He was on the team. And he got very kicked off. He wanted to just... And, and you know, he was a very smart motivator and a smart coach. But that's more of a punishment than a motivation. Yes. And what does it do? It brings the team together. It's like, we'll show you. You know, you, you can't punish a team hard enough without bringing them together against the coach. He couldn't have cared less. Most great, coaches don't care. That's a great point. And, you know, her book's obviously the late her book, May Rest in Peace. He's being inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend. You're going into the Hall. What is your thoughts on being inducted alongside Herb, Mark, Jack O'Callaghan, and the rest of the team and be part of an inaugural class of the Hall of Fame? Well, it's a distinct honor. Um, to be recognized, this is my home state, like you. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Who ever thought growing up in Brooklyn, New York, I'd be able to witness the things I've witnessed and to do the things that the privileges I've had to do. And uh, that's amazing. And Herb, Herb and I were never super close. We were close. He uh, befriended me in 1975 when I went to coach junior hockey in Minnesota. And he, um, we became friends. But Herb, you don't become close friends. It's very difficult. He, he, he was not always the easiest guy deal with. Uh, I never had any issues with him or anything, uh, but he, he wasn't the easiest guy to, uh, to deal with sometimes. But he was a brilliant coach, a good man, and I always felt he missed this calling. He could have easily been the president of the United States. He was smart enough. He most certainly was. And, and he was also talented enough to lead. Well, he was really special. He was special and a great leader, as evidenced by his career track record. We'll be joined in just a little while by yet another member of the New York State Hockey Hall of Fame inaugural induction class. Lou, we thank you so much for your time You're and congratulations. Welcome, Matthew. You're very welcome.